Hey folks, welcome back. Chris Garlock here with Michael Redmond, Nine Dime Professional. This is AlphaGo versus the world. Michael, we have a new player today, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Uh, Hong Yun Sang. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a five done at the time. And he um, he won the Globus Cup. So that's a, a tournament for young players. Mm. It was sponsored by uh, Globus, which is a Japanese company, which actually I think they they have an AI that they were developing, actually, um, hmm. which is free sourced. And so um, it, it was a company where the um, president of the company was very interested in going. He was sponsoring this tournament for young players. So Han Yun Sung won, won that. And that's probably why he's here. He, he's at a good point. That was, he won that tournament in 2015. So, and he's about 20, he's a young player. All right, well, let's um, see how he does. He has the white stones. And you might recognize this opening. Oh, yeah. We've seen it a number of times. Yes, we have. And we did not have free source computer programs to help us choose, like um, not the neural networks anyway, to help us choose opening moves. So no one knew at this point that this was actually not given a good score. It's, it's not given a good score by any of them. So I could um, show you moves like, uh, this is a move that often is chosen by Lila Zero. Uh, otherwise, like um, computer programs will want you to jump into the three three point. AlphaGo's favorite move was uh, Shimari here. So this is probably a good move too. Um, actually, I would suggest the Shimari because the corner and closer here in the lower left corner is something that's relatively easy for most human players to play. So it's mm -hmm. relatively easy for me. While this gets a good score with the computer programs, you know, I'm, I sort of doubt that I could continue this game perfectly after playing that, to say the least. So Black plays a card party, and everyone was playing this, and Black was pressing, uh, pressing here in this case, I think, um, and White was getting into trouble on the on the lower side with something like this. So this was the pattern that we were seeing in a number of games in this series. Finally, the human player tries something different. So he, uh, you probably know at this point that the computer suggested move is something from the corner. So like, for instance, one way to do it would be to play here. Yep. Another way to do it would be to play here or, or the knight's move. The knight's move also works. This kind of play is what the suggested move would be. He plays a, a pincer here and I can see the idea here is that when Black does this, since AlphaGo seems to like this move, the idea is that maybe it's better to have the pincer instead of at the mark point to have it one line further away, making the invasion that Black, Black might do against the lower side uh, less effective. Right. So there's, there's, um, you can see he's done his homework and he's, he's found an answer to this favorite move of AlphaGo. Um, which would be maybe effective if it was a human player who had sort of these patterns that we played every time. Actually, you, you find that AlphaGo will very easily change his tactics, change his tactics. It plays a different move, um, making use of the fact that now Black has room to extend on the side. Black is playing a different move. So it's sort of interesting to see that um, it's not as if AlphaGo was sort of addicted to playing the pressing move here. It, it can play any any type of move here, depending on the, the board position. So Black ex extends. And this move, I have to say, it looks really weird. <laughs> I don't understand this move. And I'm sort of happy to see that the computer programs don't like it either. Like it was completely off the map. I, I don't really understand what White is trying to do with this move. Like I, maybe I would understand White playing at this point, which would be threatening to extend, to connect underneath or to extend here on the side. But I, I just don't understand this move. So I'll show you the computer suggested move is to, just for White to- Sure, um, yeah, a yeah. Very simple move. Um, just to protect the corner. Um, and Black might continue with the honey hero or Black might play away. I don't really know um, what Black's best move is. 
but for instance, something like this would be a reasonable. White will have um, lived in the lower left corner and taken the initiative on the lower side. It would have been fairly even if white had played this way. In the game, um, I just don't like that move. And you know, with six and a half point Komi, Katabo gives black a slight, slight advantage to start with. But already at this point, that is increased to something like 59% for black. Mm. And 59% in, in this board position, it translates to something like 10 points before Komi. That's so that's already a pretty sizable difference. Yeah. And it does, doesn't look good. Like it just doesn't look, I don't understand what white is trying to do invading at a kind of a wishy-washy point on the side. It's just something I, I don't understand. And the, the negative aspect, of course, is that at some point, black is going to play this point in the co corner. Black has the initiative on the side. It means black at some point is going to get to the corner. And white's corner group, white's corner group is going to be without eyes. Wow. So, uh, this is the game move, and it doesn't look good to me either. Um, and this is the, the shake move here for white. In positions like this, it's usually um, bad to play the Atari. This is a vulgar move, okay. and after playing this, uh, white would have to protect one of the cutting points and would not be protecting both of them. So the game move, I, I'm going to call this second best um, not as bad as playing the Atari, but it's it's still giving Black a very good shape there in the center. White would like to be able to extend out into the center, being one step ahead of Black. And the one issue is that what happens if Black does something like this? Just instance? looking at that does not look good. Uh, White will extend down. Actually, you can see already that Black is sort of in trouble on the left side. The immediate uh, threat that white has is capturing the one stone here. Sure. So black will continue by saving that one stone, something like this. White plays here. Now white is threatening a ladder or a net in the center, or is threatening to push through and cut here. So if black just if black just plays some move like this, then this is easy for white. White, uh, sorry, that was a misclick. But but white's just going to win the scenario. Oh, sorry, another misclick. Uh, I'm, in, I'm in good form today. So white wins this semi. Uh, black has only three liberties. So white's gonna, white has four, so white's going to win. Even if black plays, um, plays this one, um, it's a ladder, but the ladder actually favors white. So white can just push through and cut anyway. And black gets to squeeze. Even if black gets to squeeze, um, getting the whole side there is, makes this a good result for white, actually. And this, this would have been, this actually is supposed to be good for white. Black, black will need to add a stone in the center. It means white's going to be able to play something on the, on, the, on the side too, with potential to save those stones in the center. And you can see white is the one who's getting all the territory in this. So it's a pretty good position for white. The, the potential problem that white did not have eyes in the corner it's, it's solved in this case. So back to this vision. This, this would have been the good shape move. And if black plays something uh, something like this, then white can just play. And, and this is just so much better shape than the game. Like a white three is just like it's um, so much better than having the hanging connection here. Jumping here it gives white better eye space. And it's setting up an attachment here, which is one of the standard plays against Black's large knight's corner enclosure. What, that's one of the weak points that it has. So white has this move to look forward to. And the mark point here, will it works really well in combination with white stone on the third line at three. That's, that stone at three is setting up that attachment there. It also works sometimes when white plays the other, the other key point, which is uh, C16, the other point that I've marked. So this would have been perfectly OK for white. The moment white plays this and allows black to extend, now this is um, getting bad. It's like it's already something like 65% for black. Um, so that's that's bad news. 
And what, now black slides here, you can see this white group is starting to look a bit uneasy. And this is, black is getting so much on the lower side, black has, white is not making any territory in this opening. You just, you have to look for white territory and you, you can't find any. And it's just black's territory, black has the territory, white doesn't have territory and white doesn't have eyes. So now white's gonna start to attack. So uh, let's see, at this point, um, like I'm, I'm sort of, I'm almost ready to finish the game, but I'll just show you how the attack developed, just show you some, some game moves. White's getting oh, yeah, really- just good. looking at that, that cut works, yeah. When black connects here, basically black has the clamp or, or the cut here. Either way, black can save that black group on the side. Otherwise, if black plays the diagonal move here, black's gonna have a living, living shape there. At this point, white probably has to maybe add a stone here. This would be the safe move. Otherwise, white could try to attack first by playing something like this um, and wait for black to play something like this before protecting in the center. In either case, white has to add a, a stone. White has to continue the local fight to stop black from attacking. In the game, white played away to the lower side. And we're going to see a kind of a a brutal attack here. Well, not that brutal. Like he he, he allows white to live, but it, this white group here is eyeless. This white group, and even though white got two moves in a row here, white's territory white still doesn't have any territory. And this this white group that I've circled is eyeless. It's going to be a problem for white throughout the rest of the game. And and black's just going to take advantage of that. So at this point, when black extends on the upper side, um, black actually has more territory than white because uh, white's territories are all, they're also insecure. There's this clamping move on the left side. There's the Hana here. All of white's territories are pretty small. Black has some nice territories. Black has territory on the side here, on the side here, ter a little territory here maybe. And black has potential in this quarter of the board. And so at this point, AlphaGo already has a pretty big advantage, like something like close to 15 points before Comey. Mm -hmm. As you're pointing out, it kind of all started with that mis misguided, you know, white move on the uh, middle left that just sort of didn't really go anywhere. Yeah, I, I didn't understand that move. We're talking about yeah this move. Yeah, that that's I don't understand. Yeah, it's a very strange move. It would confuse me if I was black, maybe. <laughs> this kind of move just, just doesn't work against Alpha Gold. Right, right. Another good example of the just the, the uh, amazing, you know, solidity and, and how much we've learned. And this is the thing, you know, looking at these games now, you know, after we've been, uh, you know, looking at the much stronger, you know, AlphaGo, AlphaGo games and the AlphaGo Zero games, and of course using uh, Leela and Katago and stuff like that. Uh, there's just some things that, that don't, you know, work, but we have to, you know, we have to A, give credit and, you know, it was a much different time. It was just, uh, you know, a few years ago, but it's a, it's a long time, <laughs> actually. Yeah, I, I'm really interested by, well, what I was talking about just now, the fact that you can throw curveballs and with a human player, like if you're playing something that out, outside of that player's experience, sure. then uh, even if it's, maybe not the best move, it's gonna have some kind of a result. Your opponent will be confused also. But that has no effect on AlphaGo. AlphaGo right. will always find a good answer, regardless of how strange a move you play. Right, it doesn't even eat up the clock, so. <laughs> right. Even that. Right, well, thank you, Michael. Thanks everybody for watching, appreciate that. And uh, we will see you all next game.